What do you do when the world is on fire? I grew up, lived and worked in London, England, so I understand what it means to live in a fast-paced, changing, multicultural and sometimes dangerous place. In 1981, 1995 and 2011, English cities burned and there were riots. But now everywhere it seems that our world is on fire. So what do you do when the world is on fire? If we are serious about solving our crises, we need to see whether we have missed something important. One way to do this is to look back and to see what the past teaches us. On May 26, 1940, the entire British army was driven towards the sea by Adolf Hitler and his Nazis. Desperately outnumbered, there appeared no hope. If the British army had perished at Dunkirk, the Nazi horde would have invaded and overrun Britain. When Britain fell, so would many others. Life would have been very different for us today. British Prime Minister Winston Churchill expected to save about 20,000 men from a fighting force of 300,000. It was Britain's darkest hour. But the British Army did not perish and Britain regrouped with her allies, winning the war after a long and arduous struggle that lasted another five years. This miraculous change of circumstances was for one reason alone. Almighty God intervened. The people of Britain, under the wise leadership of King George VI, came together to pray. Vast and long queues formed outside Westminster Abbey. Harrod sales or Black Fridays today would have been envious. Britain and freedom were facing annihilation then. Britain, Europe, America and indeed freedom are on fire today and only God can save us. The world is in the grip of fear whose effects are greater than any disease. Only an intervening divine hand can bring deliverance. America has led the way, albeit with a lot of opposition, with a call to prayer to bring God back into the schools, to open the church buildings for prayer too. Yet strangely, the British government as yet has said nothing on these matters. But Britain is the nation that gave the world the King James Bible in English, the father and mother of all Bible translations. Britain should, could and must make time and space for God, without whom there can be no lasting freedom from fear and threat. Our national silence reminds me of the time that ten men with terrible skin diseases, leprosy, came to Jesus. He healed them all with his word. Yet only one came back to say thank you to him and to worship God. Britain has been saved many times before by an unseen hand, but rather than showing gratitude and turning to God, we have turned away. The world is on fire. No one has the answers but God. If Britain had fallen in 1940, the world would have descended into darkness and oppression. Britain must rise again from our calamities and give moral leadership. America is the leader of the free world. Britain is the nation of the Bible that first spoke of true freedom. We need our leaders to encourage and inspire our nation to turn again to God Almighty. God hears prayer and he has promised to answer.